the posterior abdominal wall. Now, the specimen in front of you, it's a cut section of the back wall, but to give you a better idea of its location, vertebra wise, this is taken close between the junction of the thoracic and lumbar vertebra. Meaningly, it's the back side of the abdomen, but keep in mind that uh, the entirety of the abdomen from the xephoid process all the way to the pubic symphysis, the lumbar region is devoid of ribs. But since you can see the ribs here very clearly, this is a bit higher up. So this is the junction of the thoracic and the lumbar vertebrae. Still, it is below the diaphragm. So what can we see on this specimen? Right up in front, if you look over here, the prominence you see in the center, these are the vertebral bodies. All of this is actually covered with fascia. And on top of this, you can see major vessels. So right beside the vertebral bodies, and if I were to show it like this, you can see the characteristic shape of the vertebral bodies. Right beside it, we have the abdominal aorta. The number of the aorta will always descend on the left side of the vertebras. And you can see how large and quite muscular it is. It's still patent. So this is the descending part of the aorta, which is in the abdomen. And normally, on the right side, we would see the inferior vena cava. It is not present here. It's probably been removed during the dissection process. But what we can see are bits of the azygous, hemizygous veins. If you see over here, you may appreciate black venous structures. And notice how you can see lines, these intercostal veins entering into these structures. These will be forming the azygous system up above in the thorax. On this side, you can see once again how these veins, these dark blue in color, entering into those same veins. If I were to move this in the front, you can see that this is a very collapsed vein. So let's mark these in order. First we had the aorta, descending part, which is in the abdomen. Let's put it right over here without damaging it. And over here we have the azygous, semizygous venous system. I'll put one over here to show its location. And another one on the other side, just so you can see that all of those veins right here. Here's another one. Aside from this, if you were to see behind the vertebral body, you have the vertebral canal here, the spinal canal. Within the spinal canal, we have the spinal cord, and it's visible here. And notice how this spinal cord is surrounded by a thick layer of membrane. This is the dura mater covering the spinal cord. Keep in mind the dura mater, is, uh, which is part of the meninges, cover not only the brain and brain stem, but also the spinal cord all the way up to its end. So this thick sheet we see here is the dura mater. In the center, you can see the spinal cord cut section. From here, on the side, between two vertebras, Obviously, you have the intervertebral disc, but right over here, we have the intervertebral foramen through which you have the passage of the nerves. And uh, I'm going to point the nerves out with a thin pin so you can see them. A very good nerve that we can see is right over here. Let me remove all of this fascia. Here I can even see bits of the peritoneum here. The thicker one is always peritoneum. Remember that. The more whitish in color is the fascia. And here we go. Let me just pass one through here. Right. There we go. I hope you can see it. This is the nerve coming out, the intercostal nerves. Obviously, at this point, I would call them the lumbar nerves, actually. So these are coming from the intervertebral foramen. And I will also label the intervertebral disc so you can appreciate the two adjacent vertebras. There we go. Intervertebral disc is made of the 
annular fibrosis and the nucleus pulposus in between. So you can see the disc and the two vertebras. This is the same disc that can rupture and protrude outside causing your herniated disc syndrome, also known in layman's term as a slip disc. But remember, that's usually towards the back side actually. And it happens obviously to state of dehydration, weakness and even muscle weakness. So we have a nerve, the major vessels and the smaller vessels and intervertebral disc. On top, I showed you the dura mater and spinal cord. So let's pass a nerve pin through here. Passing it throughout the whole thing. The dura mater is a thick one coming on the outside. Inside, obviously, there's also the subarachnoid and the pia mater as well. Going further back, this is the point where we have the lamina of the vertebras. The lamina is the back side which covers the spinal cord posteriorly. And we also have the transverse processes. These processes are the ones that meet with the costal ribs. They're the ones that articulate with them. All of these are actually intercostal ribs and you can see from the cut section, they're very nicely seen. It's very easy to identify these ribs. We see them all the time, even when eating chicken or beef. But it's the muscle that's in between the ribs. Those are important. Externally, the muscles you see here, this is the external intercostal muscle. On the inside is the innermost intercostal muscle. Although they're mostly towards laterally and anteriorly, so at this point we may even call this the innermost. There are three in number, external, internal and innermost. So here we have the external and here we have at this point, let's call them the innermost. So I'm passing a, let's use a yellow pin for these muscles. And these muscles, keep in mind that there are the accessory muscles of respiration. The primary is the diaphragm, which is used for inhalation. But these ones, they're accessory. They're mostly contracted during heavy breathing, like in exercises. And uh, this is uh, as much as there is on the front side. So let's turn this thing around and see what's on the back. On the back, you can see a number of muscles here. <clears throat> Starting from the center point, if you would see it again like this, where the lamina is, the end point of the lamina is the spinous process. The spinous process cannot be seen here, cannot be palpated. So the thing I'm touching right over here, this thing. In fact, let's see if I can pass a white pin through it. It's bony, it's going to be difficult. But since I'm touching it, I can feel it. At this point right over here I can't pass much deeper than this so just bear with this this is the spinous process tip of the spinous process there are actually a group of muscles here look at well, collectively they are known as the erector spiny muscles and they're composed of three parts the ones immediately adjacent to the spinous process these are the spinalis Thoracicus. Up above there will be thoracicus. As we go down below to the pelvis, spinalis lumborum. This is the spinalis part, right alongside the spinous process. Going further, this is the longissimus thoracicus. If you were to go even further up to the neck, then it becomes the longissimus cervicus, and to the head, longissimus capitus. Down below, obviously, the name changes, but it's the longissimus. Spinalis longissimus, and uh, here, let me just show you the spinalis here. The lateral most is the iliocostalis, and likewise the naming scheme, this is the iliocostalis. Naming scheme also changes depending on location, up above iliocostalis thoracicus, below iliocostalis lumborum. These three collectively make the erector spiny, keeps the back straight. But there are also other muscles, removing all of this, this is superficial, deeper muscles. Notice over here, you can see these fan-shaped muscles extending from the center, almost like a serratum. These are actually your serratus posterior. Just like in the front, we have the serratus anterior, the muscle which is involved in protraction of the scapula, the punching muscle. 
These ones down below are the serratus posterior here. And here you can see a flap. This muscle is actually extend, extending from top up above. This is the latissimus dorsi. And although it inserts up above near the tip of the scapula, it originates from the lower ribs over here. This muscle is involved in the climbing. So these were the back muscles we see here. And obviously the ribs here, we're coming closer to the 9th, 10th rib. 11th and 12th will be floating. It's not seen over here. And the other ones up above, as you person. Here you can see cut section, the spinal cord, and the dura mater surrounding it as well. The vertebra has been removed, particularly the lamina portion has been removed, so you can see the spinal cord here as well. And this was the posterior abdominal wall, uh, briefly. There are other minor things that are more better appreciated in other specimens, like the sympathetic chains or other smaller uh, structures like thoracic, like, although we'll find that more superiorly. But hopefully, the marks present here will help you out in the OSPI. Thank you so much for joining us. Allah Hafiz.